Hi, this is Joanne, and as far as my teaching career has been concerned, I have primarily been called upon to teach biology to people who are trained in other fields of sciences but not in biology, and maybe they want to use biology as their model or to explore a new area of their uh, field. And uh, so I basically it seems I'm an engineer magnet, and I learned in my graduate school years that biologists and engineers are very, very different. They think think about things very differently. They approach their problems in uh, very divergent ways. Um, so in graduate school I had a very unique set of skills and was able to get very prime teaching positions. And one of the courses I taught was called Scanning Electron Microscopy. You all have seen images produced by scanning electron microscopes. So if you've ever seen a pollen commercial where they show the pollen grain, or maybe a pet commercial where they're showing a flea up close, these images most likely were produced by a scanning electron microscope. And we produce these images by sending electrons through a filament in this microscope that's very, very tall, maybe about 10 feet tall. And these electrons shoot down onto the sample. We focus the electrons with magnets. And uh, the electrons scan across the sample, the scanning, and then we're able to capture the image. Now, most of the pictures you see are colorized, and they make for very amazing photographs. And, um, and it, it turns out that, you know, if you get enough of these photographs together, you can make a beautiful picture book, and somebody has. And this book is called Microcosmos, and it's compiled by Brandon Broll. And I keep this particular book full of images in my uh, teaching laboratory, and then when students are waiting around for uh, their experiment to finish or something, then, you know, they can go ahead and look at this, and it, it's pretty nice that, uh, the you know, I keep this around. So here's... Um, for instance, an ant holding a silicon microchip. So these are the type of images we can find in here. Hoping I'm, this is uh, some sort of parasite that you can you can view for all sorts of things. So um, th that's just to show you what scanning electron microscopy is like. When I had the students in that class, I had from two different areas. I had biologists, and I had also what we used to call ceramics people, but now we call them material scientists. And they would approach this microscope very in very different ways. Now, um, I would have to say, hey, listen, do me a favor and turn this knob up slowly so that when we send the current through this electrode, it doesn't break apart. Because if it breaks apart, then, you know, if you're using it at 3 a.m., then I need to come in and fix that. And this is not my idea of a good time. So, um, turn it up slowly. When biologists would come to this knob, they would, they would turn and they would just start turning very, very slowly and with trepidation. And you could see the fear in their eyes. It'd be like, <gasps> thinking that the machine was just going to explode if they turned it up too fast at all. Sort of like as if it were a, a living organism. If you break it, that's it. It's the, the, end of, the end of the microscope. Whereas an engineer, of course, is just like, well, this is just a machine, and if it breaks, we can fix it. And so they would just come and they would crank that knob. And I'd be like, you are the people I'm talking to. Please don't do this. Uh, have respect for this machine. And um, anyway, so <laughs> that, that was my first uh, experience in seeing how engineers and biologists approach something very differently. Um, and now that I'm working in a bioengineering department, um, I often, I'm often called upon to, to consult with these uh, primarily engineering-minded folks uh, to, to explain to them different things about biology. And I find that it is very difficult to convey the complexity and the elegance of biology and the, the way um, we, we think about it um, to these people because they, they will often say, hey, I'm just going to do this and this is how it's going to turn out. And I'm just sure that's how it's going to turn out. I said, well, you might want to talk to the cells about that because I'm not sure they're going to agree. They're, they're going to be on the same page with you. So I always wonder, wow, how can, how can I explain biology to these people, the, the complexity of the whole thing? And I think I found a way. And this way would be through this book, Microcosm. And this is called E. coli and the New Science of Life by Carl Zimmer. 
Carl Zimmer has been a science writer for quite some time and his topics are always biological. This is actually the first book of his I have read. I have read his articles in, in uh, Discover and in Time Magazine and various other places, but um, I, I've pretty much avoided his other books because I was thinking, oh, I'm a biologist, why would I want to read a biology book, uh, a popular biology book? I'd rather go learn something new. And I have to say, oh wow, why have I deprived myself of his books all these years?